Lisa, thank you for filling in tonight and, and taking that role. I, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's, I never know, and then I get here and it's like, okay. So I appreciate that. Uh, talk about some, some things tonight. How many have how many have a testimony you'd like to share about Jesus, what Jesus has done in your life? I mean, if you do, okay, well, let's, listen, I want to hear those. Uh, if you do me a favor and write this down and, or get it in your brain, I have, a, I have an email that's called helpmepastorjeff at gmail.com. Helpmepastorjeff at gmail.com. And uh, I'd like to hear your story. I'd like for you to write it down or video it and send it to me. I'd like, to, I'd like to see I'd like to see it and, and talk to you about it I, I want to I want to see your journey where God has brought you from I mean, what's that website called that, watch that, right? that email help me pastor Jeff at gmail.com and uh, if you'll go there and I just want to the reason I did that one is because I get so much other stuff in my pastor Jeff Nance at gmail I get so much of that it'll go straight to through the trash, I won't see it, or not the trash, but whatever, spam, and I won't see it, but if you'll do it to help me, Pastor Jeff, at gmail.com, I'll see it, and I'd like to see your story, I'd like to read your story, I'd like to know what, God, what God's doing in your life, I know God's doing some things, I hope He is, Amen. I hope that God's taking you from one place to the other, I hope that you're not the same in September as you were, as you were, as you were in, in January, I hope that you're not exactly how you were then as you are now. I pray that God's moving in your life. I pray that there's healing coming into your lives. There's, there's so much, there's so much stuff that happens in people's lives. And I, I would love, I want to hear Matthew's story. I haven't heard his all. I've heard all of his story. I know you gave it at, uh, at, the, at the street. And uh, I'd like to hear that, your journey. I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear Becky's journey. I'd like to hear Lisa's journey and David's journey and Dean's journey and Naomi's journey and Rachel's journey. I'd like to hear them. I'd like to kind of know where you where you're coming, where you came from. And what see, I, I just know your church you. I don't know the broken down hurt you. If you want to video it, just get with me and huh? I'll video it. Here. If you want to video it, just get with me and I'll video it. I love it. I would love it. Um, I just want to. I, I want to see those stories. I want to share those stories with the church. We used to do what was called testimony service. You remember those? Yeah. Whenever I get testified, and I, and every time you can sit down, you go, "Oh, I should have said that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I should have told them that. Right. Oh, I forgot." Right. And the only reason I'm not saying that we shouldn't have impromptu testimonies. That's fine. But when you sit down and you talk about the story, you won't forget things. That maybe somebody's going through. Maybe somebody is having a hard time in a, in a marital area, and maybe God God has worked it out in your life, and, and all of a sudden now they have hope. That makes sense. Yeah. Maybe somebody had, had a sickness in their life, and and they, and they watched. They hear your story about how God delivered you and how God healed you, and now all of a sudden they have, they're encouraged because if they'll do it for. Randy, he'll do it for me. Right. See, the problem is we, we watch TV and we don't know these people that get healings. And this it's great. Yeah, hallelujah. It's fantastic. But it's better if you know somebody who's been through something and God brought them through something. So that's my whole point. That's my whole thought process. I just want to share your stories with everybody. Not, you don't have to tell everybody your dirt. I'm not asking you to... Get down and dirty and tell them what bar you went to and how many times you were there and you passed out and prayed to the porcelain God. I don't need all that stuff. I, I don't want all that stuff. I just want where God, I was in this place and God delivered me. God set me free. My life has changed and different. You don't have to get into all the gory details of your stuff. I just want to, I just want to hear your stories. I want to know where God brought you from. I want to know why you don't like somebody. I want to know. I want to know how come, what, what can we do to fix that? Where, where can I take you? What can I do to, to help you get through that? Because as long as you're stuck there, you'll never get to where you're going. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.
just wanted to share that with you. Also, if you want to go to uh, help me pastor Jeff at gmail.com, uh, Ethan, can you put that up here for me? Can you put that, uh, can you do something for me on the screen from there to there? If I, if I give you a website, can you go to it on here? You know, is that possible? I'm just asking you if it's possible. I didn't think about it just now. I would ask you before service. But. Yay, nay, maybe. Is that possible? I don't know if it's possible. Okay, if, it, if, it is, if it's not, uh, we have a thing called Right Now Media. We've paid for it for a long time. I use it all the time. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic. It's free to use. You go to Help Me Pastor Jeff at gmail.com. That is the sign in. The username is, I believe it's Pastor3030 or something like that. I believe it's Pastor3030. And, uh, huh? Is that right? But it's free. We can have as many people. You can give it to everybody you know. We can have as many people as know that it costs us another dime. And for what we already paid for. And so it, it is, it is a I'm hoping they can get that up for you. I'm just trying to give you a little, some stuff. Is it all right if I just... Is that all right if I start pastoring my church and just preaching that? Yeah. Is that okay if I just start doing that and start pastoring my church and being a pastor to you instead of just a preacher? Can I do that? Yes. I'm going to. I'm going to put. I'm bringing my motorcycle. I'm parking it up here. I am. Because it's my bike. Okay. I am. No, you can't do it. No internet. No internet. David, go fix it. No. Oh. Okay, um, I don't have my phone either. Uh, get, do you have your smartphone? Do you have your phone, Matthew? Yeah. Do you have your tablet with you? Would you, would you look up uh, Right Now Media? Oh, do you have service? Uh, sorry. Well, I, I couldn't get I had to take my phone off of Wi Fi. Got one, yeah. It's coming. It's just being silly. When when you get there, let me know. Okay. You're there. Okay. Just say log in or something for the sake. Just say log in on the top. think of is at your fingertips free for you it has everything that you that you need to be to, to be used if you want to use it it has every there's no excuse there's another there's no excuse as to why you don't have some information to help you along the way it is fantastic it's a fantastic thing that we have we have access to it I want you to use it you can give it away to anybody you want to give it to uh, I know a church that uh, they got it. Every visitor that comes, they have a card in there that gives them the the, uh, the login and the and the password, and it helps them to any anything they want. Uh, it's there for you. Has anybody else looked it up besides Matthew? Are you there? Okay. Are you there? And it's it's an invaluable resource. Use it. Use it. We've get, we've had it for five years, and I don't know if anybody has even used it besides me. But uh, uh, there's another thing that I can use to contact with our leaders. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of stuff we can do to I can, I can send you stuff, write your stuff, send it to you, and uh, we can have uh, actual Bible study online from device to device, and it's fantastic. 
I, I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. It's a wonderful resource for me. Instead of me having to go out and buy books, yes, ma'am. Can you say all that again about the site? The what? The website. The website. website. What? It is help me pass. Oh, the website is rightnowmedia.com. Right now, media. It, it has an orange R. You'll see it. And uh, the app. You can get the app at the at your Apple Store or your uh, or the Play. Uh, you can do that. It's rightnowmedia.com. The um, login is helpmepastorjeff at gmail.com. The password is pastor3030. And I think 3030 was the account number. So, huh? All lower cap. All lower caps. I tried to make it as easy as possible. I tried to do Pastor 3030 so everybody could kind of be able to remember that. That's my basketball. Huh? Be a more job. That's, uh, I just want to help you. I want to help you get along this journey. I want to help you in any way I can possibly help you. Uh, there's some of the conferences are, yes, Howard? My wife needs fresh in. Not feeling good? My wife's not feeling good either. <laughs> she said, I feel fine. Come on, ladies, I need y'all to have a come. Come pray. What's wrong, Kelly? right now, that he would come to her body, that he would touch her right now in the name of Jesus. God bless her, God give her strength. God move upon her in the name of Jesus. Bless her right now, Father. Touch her in the name of Jesus. He would come to her body. He would come to her body. God bless her in every situation, in everything, God. I ask you to touch Howard's mom, too. As we begin to pray for Ella, I ask you to touch Howard's mother, God. He would come to her body in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise for Howard and for Howard and for all her family. God bless me, love them, ask for touch them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, did you get it? Sure. Um, I don't remember where I was at to tell you that, but um, just want to make sure you have that resource. Oh, I was telling you, some of the conferences are a little older. Uh, from 14, 15, 16, 17 in that area, uh, they're not, they don't automatically transfer. So if, you're good, if you were to go to the Passion Conference uh, 2017, it may not be there. 2016 may be there, but 17 may not be there uh, until they do the next year. And so, um, just so you know, okay? Um, let me think of something else I was supposed to tell you, and I don't remember what it was, but that's okay. Oh, Lisa, uh, on the um, ladies, you guys are leaving. Um, I, Sister Morton asked if we could bring a couple of cases of water with you for the, for the people on the stage. It doesn't have to be cold. I just want to, I'll have it, I have it in my office. So I, the only reason I thought about that, it's, it's weird, but I saw someone getting a drink of water and I was looking toward your direction. And I just, I know that you're going to be in charge of that, so I appreciate that. Okay, anybody else um, I ever need any of that information? You got it, right? Pastor Jeff, help me, Pastor Jeff at gmail.com. Pastor 3030. Okay? I already got the app. Go to the app store and get the app. Or go to the, uh, Google Play. Get the app. Uh, mine's on my phone. It, it, it usually keeps you, it usually keeps you uh, logged in. And so you don't have to go through all that every time. You just click the app and you're there. And it's fantastic. You'll love it. If you don't, if you like to study the Word, you'll love it. If you like to listen to, to conferences, you'll love it. If you like to read and, those, those, and that stuff, you'll love it. I, I absolutely love it. I wanted to share it with you. I know I've shared it before, but it's been a while, and so I wanted to um, kind of throw that out there to you. Uh, talk to you real fast, and uh, it's already 7 o'clock. I won't keep you real long. But I'm going to talk to you about some missing some opportunities uh, that I feel like that we have really kind of missed um, just being busy. Uh, I was talking to uh, Sister Kim, and Kim, I don't know if you guys know this, but she made four trips in a van Wednesday to bring kids here. She stopped counting at 50 that she brought. That's amazing to me. Uh, we took two van, uh, now and I both, we took two van loads home ourselves while Kim was taking some, uh, some, other, some others home, and uh, I think I got home about 9.30ish, and we got out of church at 8. And so uh, we, that's, that's what I'm talking about, volunteers. We need some volunteers to help. And, uh, and it's not that I mind. I don't mind driving church, man. I, I, matter of fact, I like driving church, man. Yes, ma'am. I've been driving man on Wednesday. 
You're a wonderful, wonderful. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's my present. <laughs> Uh, we will, yeah, because I know it's late. You have to get up at 4 or 3. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we can, we'll work all that out. I need you to fill out the forms and I'll talk to you. And so, because I have to have all that done, I have to, have to be done properly or we're in trouble. Uh, but I think we've just kind of, we've kind of uh, missed some opportunities, not only for kids, but adults. Um, I, I, I'm such a teen, teen and young person focused person that sometimes I miss uh, some opportunities with adults. Um, and so I need some help in that area that you guys have ideas that I don't have and you see things that I don't see and so uh, I'd like to talk with some of you about that uh, uh, I need to talk to David and Lisa uh, about David, I need to talk to you guys uh, about some I just we'll talk okay uh, about some things I just need your ideas All right, uh, names names of the spies of Israel they are missing some opportunities. They're missing an opportunity to go to the promised land. In Numbers chapter 13, verses 4 through 15, and then 27 through 33, in Numbers chapter 14, 1 through 11, Israel misses some opportunities. Now, I've used these same scriptures before, and I've talked to you about missing opportunities before. It's been several years that since I've... You know, I find that the longer I'm here, I find myself going back to some things that I talked to you about six or five or six years ago because I think that we need to be refreshed and reminded of some things. Um, I, I think that we, we sometimes forget some things and we need to be reminded of where we came from. But the spies had a grand opportunity. They had an opportunity to affect the change of a nation. They had the opportunity, and we have an opportunity to affect the change of a city and a nation. Now, I know, I know that everybody uh, hears me say that, and everybody goes, yeah, that's great, that's fantastic, Brother Jeff. But I really believe it with all that's in me, that we have the ability to change the city. I believe that we really have, really have a, a, the ability to change the, the opportunities for young men and young women. I, I am such a... I don't know, a dreamer, I guess. I'm wearing a correct shirt, I guess. I'm such a dreamer. Because I, I just believe there's a way that we can that we can touch and reach this community. Yeah. I just believe there's a way that when we move north that we can touch Barnum and Strother and yeah. Seminole all together. And we don't have to forsake one to reach the other. Yeah. I just don't believe that we have to do that. I don't believe that we can forget about New Lima and we woke at Bolags and just because we're in Seminole. I, I think that we can reach a great number of people. Uh, Shawnee's represented. Shawnee in the house. Let's see. All right. And so Shawnee's here. And so we have all. And, and, so, and Sister Casey. <laughs> she worked all day. She came to church tonight because she's awesome. Amen. Amen. So did Sister Norma this morning. Sister Norma, drug in this morning. She was sleepy this morning. And she got home late and got up and then came to church this morning. And I said, how are you? She said, tired. <laughs> she did a lot. So I was, I was proud of her. But we have such an opportunity to affect change. I looked this morning, and this morning there was Becky and Darren who are school teachers. There's Kim and Kay who are school teachers. There's Trisha who's a school teacher. There was, uh, who else was I missing? Uh, there was those five, and I can't remember who else was here. I had it down in my head, but we have school teachers that are prevalent in our church. Usually Josh and Brianna here, they've been seven, but they weren't here this morning. Nina. Nina. And I couldn't remember, uh, Sister uh, Shelly McClanahan. And, and she, she, Janet. And, and so we're missing people that we normally have. And I believe that God has given those people to us for a reason to affect change in the school. And they're all different schools. Kim, is, she's teaching at Bolex. The McClanahan and Sister Nita and Sister uh, McClanahan, uh, Shelly, they are, they are teaching in Maud. Kate, Kim, I mean, Kate is teaching at Seminole. Josh is at Seminole. Huh? Kate substitutes every school in the, in the 
Tri-County area. And um, we were only missing a few pieces there that would be effective in every school. And I believe God has given that to us for a reason. I'm not saying we're going to use them and, and abuse them, but I'm saying, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Becky and Darren, are, uh, Darren is at Prague, and, and Becky is at North Rock Creek, and, and, and that's just, that's a pretty wide area of people that we're able to influence, and I believe God has given us those resources for a reason. I don't think it just happens by mistake. I think God gives us opportunity. But what are we going to do with the opportunity? What are we going to do? Are we going to stay and say, well, it's nice to have Becky and Aaron with us. Good to have them. And not use them for what God has purposed them to be used for? I think that we can affect change in the community. I think we can affect change by, you know, uh, I'm sure Darren and Becky are very positive in their in their uh, relationships with their kids because I, I know Darren is coaching wrestling in, in Prague and and, and, uh, and I'm sure that there are times that he has to use his abilities that he learned in Sunday school teaching to teach kids how to wrestle. I love, I love, he told me the other day, he said, he told a kid, he said, you've got to be able to get out of every situation. And the first thing that came in my mind was, that's a Sunday school lesson. Now, he may not have thought of that, and I don't know if he even cared. But I'm just saying, but to me, it just popped in my head, we've got to be able to get out of every situation. And uh, I just, I thought about that the other day when, I, when he was telling me that. But God had placed in front of them a place to affect change in the world. God had placed in front of them a place that they could change everything. He had changed everything. They were on the verge of turning the world upside down, but they had to do something about it. They couldn't just simply say, well, we're going to turn the world upside down. They were, uh, they were there. They were in the place. They spent 40 days in this place. They spent enough time. They could have built a house. They could have dug a well. They could have put up a home. They could have done everything. Everything in their world was about to change. They were going from slave to kings of a land that they didn't plant. They were going to place a promise. Promise. I think of promise a lot because we've been promised a lot. And as my pastor, my first pastor is, is leaving this world and going to another world and has... He's laying in his home tonight and his body's still alive, but his spirit is not really there. I think, and this, maybe this is stupid, but this is how I think. I was thinking of that part, that part of this church is passing on to another part. The church in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and the early 80s passing on. He spent four decades here. <coughs> He's preached in four decades. The 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s in this building. And that's passing on to another place. And I thought to myself, the promise, all the promises that God made a Harry Ford and he preached in this church to a congregation of people, were those promises, today, were they fulfilled or were they just thought, well, that's really a great promise. That's really neat. But nobody moved on those promises. Nobody accepted those promises and carried them forward. Did, did we take the promises that God had given us and do something with them? Or did we say, that's a nice promise. I appreciate the promise, but I'm comfortable. Did we take those promises and do something with them? Or did we just simply say, thank you, Brother Ford, for preaching that great message. God gave them an open door to their destiny, expecting them to walk through with His promises. I know it's scary. I know it is. And I, I, I fight fear all the time. What? I'm not, I'm not supposed to tell you that. I'm the preacher. I'm not supposed to tell you the truth. But I fight fear all the time. And I figure if God can tell Joshua to fear not, it's okay for me to say, oh, I'm fearful. If God can tell Joshua not to fear the people, it's okay for me to be honest and say, sometimes I fight fear. I fight a lot of things in, in my spirit. I fight a lot of 
a lot of battles in my spirit. I try not to let them out, let them be seen, let everybody see the battles that I'm fighting. But there's there's times in my in, in my life that that I, I fight battles that are that are struggles and hard to fight. And sometimes you feel like you have to fight them by yourself. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And you feel like there's nobody you can talk to because you don't want to talk to the wrong person. Right. And, and my wife doesn't. She won't understand. I feel that way. And that's not probably true, but I feel that way sometimes. She won't understand. She won't get it. I know that's probably not the correct way to be, but I'm just, I'm just trying to be honest with you and tell you the truth. And sometimes those battles take a toll on me spiritually. Sometimes they take a toll on me physically. Sometimes they take a toll on me in my, in the, in my, in my family, in, the, in my family's life. Because sometimes I'm not the most pleasant guy to be around when I'm fighting a spiritual battle that I can't talk to anybody about. I don't know about you, but I'm talking about me. When I'm fighting things that nobody has a clue, they just think I'm being a jerk. I try not to be a jerk. I've got a little jerk in me, but I'm trying, I'm trying not to have a whole bunch. And so, I, I, when you're fighting those things and God has given you an open door and you're fearful to walk through them because you don't know what's on the other side of the door. You just know that God's opened the door. But you don't know, you know what's on this side and it's comfortable. How many have ever heard me preach about it? it's comfortable to be on the stage? It's uncomfortable for me to be out there. It's comfortable for me to be in front of you. It's uncomfortable for me not to be in front of you. I know that's stupid and that's weird, but that's just my life. And I get it. But as they were, as they were fixing to walk through the door into their destiny, they, got it, they, had made it, they had made a decision. They were going to go spy out the promised land. They were going to go spy it out. That was their decision. Their destiny was to be in the promised land, but their decision was to just spy it out, not take it. And so they had made decisions that were affecting their destiny. The Bible says that, 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 that said that surely it flows with milk and honey. We've seen the place that God asked for us to go. That's what the spies said. We've seen it. We've stayed there. We've been there. We understand that. And, and so when you're fighting within yourself, you're having a spiritual battle within yourself, and you don't know who to turn to and what to do, and you turn to God, and it just doesn't seem like God's answering what you want Him to answer. Can somebody help me? Help me preach to you tonight for a little bit. And you just don't understand it. You don't really get it. And you just have to be, you have to be, you're hoping you get in Hebrews 11 because you're going to walk by faith. And you're hoping you get in the wall of faith, man. You're just hoping, by, by God, I'm going to get there. God, you ought to put me in Hebrews 11 because I, I've been walking by faith and I, I, not by sight because I can't, can't see and I can't feel you. Yeah. I'm just walking. Yeah. And I'm battling. <laughs> struggling. But I keep walking. I keep putting one foot in front of the other. I keep going. When the devil tells me to quit, I tell the devil to shut up. And I keep going. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Last Wednesday, I had the kids scream, shut up. I'm sorry they screamed in the draft. I know some of y'all don't like that. But I, wanted to, I said it to make a point. I wanted to tell the devil to shut his mouth. He roars like a lion. He's just not a lion. Go ahead with this. Okay, Amen. listen. Come on. Listen. And when you're struggling and you're putting one foot in front of the other, you're just hoping you can make it to the next day. And you're hoping you can make it to the next day without falling over something. And you're hoping you can make it to the next day. And you don't know exactly what you're going to do. All you know is that you have to continue to walk. And, but some of the spies have said, I, I've seen where we're going. We have evidence of his promise. Got evidence of his promise. And I think I shared this on a Sunday. I don't know if I have it or not, but I go out to the property and I just thank God. I know that sounds weird. That sounds crazy, but I drive out there, and I don't know if you've been out there, but it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of property that God has given us. It's, our, it's, it's a promised land. It's a place that God has promised Brother Ford, Brother Turner, and I just get to be the recipient of it. Amen. It, is, it is 
as, as part of my heritage is dying on this life, on this life I, I, I just wonder, are we going to, are we going to honor, honor the promises that God gave him? You know how thankful I am that we did November and September to remember and honor him? You know, you know how thankful I am that God laid that on my heart and we did that? Amen. That we don't wait until he passes away to say what a great guy he is. That we actually honor him. And I've got pictures of him being here. And I'm just, he loved it. And he had such a fun time seeing everybody, even though he called my wife Carol. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Listen, we have evidence of his promise. I have evidence of his promise. I've seen what he'll do. I've seen what he's done in the last seven years of this church. I've seen where God has taken us from, where, where, where we were, and what God's done. I've seen it. I know, but still, yet it's hard to take that step, is it not? Is it not hard to see an open door? And I know there's some people, man, they, man they, just, they just run through doors, man. I'm not that guy. And I'm like, what's behind that door? Fear not. Well, that, that means there's something to fear, man. Because we know what he's told us, but to get to the honey, and I think I used this before, but to get to the honey, you have to face the bees. To get the milk, you have to control the cow. So to get the milk and honey, you've got to face your bees and control the cow. You've got to get the cow and the bees together. You have to have the honey. Well, you don't want to have honey. But you have to have the fruit together okay, to get the milk and honey. There's only one way to receive honey, and you have to take it from the hive. I wish there was a better way I could tell you that, well, actually, what we do is we go to the store and buy it, right? <laughs> but somebody had to face the bees to get to it. Right. To get to the cow, you have to, to get started to get to the milk, you have to milk the cow. Somebody had to milk the cow. Bees don't fly to you and say, hey, would you like some honey? <laughs> they don't give it up voluntarily. Cows don't walk around saying, hey, got milk, free milk. Nope. They don't. Nope. Now they will scream at you when they're hurting because there's milk. They will scream at you let you know they're ready. Mm -hmm. but hear me just real fast. That they don't give it up voluntarily. It has to be taken. Ooh, Jesus. The land that God has promised us, we have to take it. The promises of God, we have to take them. The, the help of God, we have to let God help us. We have to do those things. We have to, we have to let God be God in our life. Listen, we, we, have, we cannot have the nevertheless. The people won't spirit. We have to take it. Because it's God's. And God's promises. If you're not willing to face the bees and the beasts, nevertheless, the people of the cities and the giants are too great for us. Are you willing to face what God has placed in front of, in front of you? I, I know, um, I, I've already buried my soul, so I'm going to keep on. Um, when we see the, the task in front of us, and it looks so great, and we feel so insignificant. I don't know if that's, you ever face that or not, but I do. Amen. When you see there's such a great task to, for God to do such great things and, and you feel so insignificant because I don't know how to do what it is that God's asked me to do. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. I've never seen anybody do it. I don't know. I, I've, never, I've never been part of anybody doing it. I've never had an example of what God wants me to do done. I don't know how. I just don't know how. But I believe that God brings teachers. And God brings those that he needs to educate you. But are you willing to be educated? The people said, let's go back to Egypt. And I, I church, I can't go back. I, I can't. I can't go back to where I came from. I, I can't. 
I'm well past that. Well past it. I can never run from, I can never return from where I came from. There's nothing there for me. I, I can't go back there. Listen, I want you to, I want you to put the tape recorder right in your mind. Oh, that's, that's, okay, we did that. Okay, I want you to, I want you to put the video in your mind of where you were at seven years ago. And where you're at today. I don't want to go back to where I was seven years ago. Now, some of you may have great memories of seven years ago. That's just because you've forgotten the bad stuff. Seven years ago, I don't want to go back to where I was spiritually. I don't want to go back to where I was at physically. Everything. I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to where I was building a business and I was working 70, 80 hours a week. I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to where my kids go to sleep and I go back to work. I don't want to go back to that. I don't. I want to be where God has me now. Matthew, can you help me? Oh, we're going to go Say, for example, Matthew. Come back. We think, we think, <laughs> second in. Uh, and I'll hold my paper. Okay, second one. Listen. Um, we, think, we look at it this way. Time travel. Yeah, the time machine. When we're traveling through time, we, we can only go one way, right? You can't rewind your life. You can't go back. Life's like an hourglass moves through the table. Okay, you can't turn it back over. You have to go forward. So as Matthew's walking forward in his life, hey, just so you know, you're dying. I just say so you know, because you're getting close to death. Even as you think, you have a good weekend. Okay, so. <laughs> You can't go back. And I pray that Matthew lives to be 917 years old as long as he has a mind and health. Okay? Yeah. I pray that he lives a, a super long life. But in his life right now, this is where he's at. And he, maybe he said, God, I need something. I need an answer to a, a problem. And, he, and he's asking around God, God, I need it. 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 i got to have an answer. You see, God is infinite. Yeah. From this time in Matthew's life, he saw Matthew here. From this time in Matthew's life, he sees, he sees Matthew here. He saw Matthew as a little boy. He sees him as a man. He'll see him as an old man. He's infinite. He can go back and forth on our timeline, and we can't. And so when Matthew says, I need an answer, i got to have an answer, i got to have an answer, and God drops it here, because he's not ready for it now. The promise is that God will give you an answer. The hard part is, is to keep walking toward the answer. Because what happens is this, is so, so many times we get so frustrated at not having the answer that we stop. I see there's so many people in our, in, in our church that you were, you were here when you got hurt. And though your body's going here, your spirit's still here. Because you won't get over it. And if you won't get over it, even though you're walking forward, walk slowly forward. Even though you're walking forward, your spirit stays here. As you get older, your spirit stays here. God can't put an answer here. Stop. God can't put an answer here because your spirit's still here. Yeah, with me. Until you heal this. Come back here. Okay. Until you heal this. And you may heal it here. You may heal it here. And you may heal it here. But wherever it is on your timeline, you've got to get it healed. And you've got to stop with the nonsense and walk into the promises of God. Because the promise that God promised you is here. But you've got to walk until you get to here. Are you with me? My children shall be saved. Great. Where at? Here. Where are you? Here. That's a long way when you're waiting on a promise. That's a long way when you're waiting on God to do something. That's a long way when you're waiting for God to do something. So when you're injured here, you'll never get here. 
in your spirit. You know, your body, you get older, you're just going to get older. I'm sorry, it doesn't get any better. Okay, you're going to get older. Still, a weird one. Okay. But by the time he gets here, he should have a little gray in that beard. He should have a little gray in his hair. He should have a little seasoning in his life. He should have been through some things that now I don't stop when the promise I know is in front of me. I don't get mad and I quit because like someone said something to me. I continue to go on forward and I gotta I get it, even though I may die on the other side of the parking lot. Okay, that's how long your life's gonna be. Okay. okay. Even though I may physically die on the other side of the parking lot, God gave me an answer that I needed to hear. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. Does that make sense to anybody? Yes. Okay. So Moses and Aaron. They hear this from Caleb and Joshua. The land is ready for us to take. If the Lord delight in us, if the Lord delight in us, we can have what God said. God says that He delights in His children. He loves you. He's given you what it is that you need. He's given you the promise. He's given you all those things, but you have to get to the promise. Just because you don't have to live in it right now doesn't mean it's not coming in your life. Just because you don't have the answer right now doesn't mean it's not coming in your life. You have to work your way toward it. Because some of us, listen, we can't handle what it is that God has for us right now because we're still dealing with battles that happened 15, 20 years ago, and we're still trying to get through those. we got to get those things straightened up. And if we don't get those things straightened up, we'll never get to where God would have us to go. Right. I'm almost done. Somebody said, thank God. All right, let's... Joshua and Caleb showed their, showed their indignation toward the people's disbelief. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make you a bad Christian to believe in God and get mad when people stand in the way of what God's doing. It doesn't make you a bad Christian. The Bible doesn't say you can't be mad. It says be angry but sin not. The Bible doesn't say walk up spit in their face and tell them how stupid they are. It didn't say that. It says for us to follow after Christ. And even though, even though we have some indignation sometimes because people get in the way of what God's doing, we have to keep walking toward the Lord. The land is exceedingly good is what Joshua said. The land is exceedingly good. The promises that God has for you are exceedingly good. God has great things for you. He has great things planned for you. He has wonderful <laughs> things planned for you. But you have to keep walking toward the promise. The Lord delights in us. He will give it to us. I believe the Lord has delighted in it. I'm skipping a whole lot of this. I don't want to keep you till 9 o'clock, so I'm skipping a whole lot of this. So where are you at this evening? Are you where Matthew was? You're just starting out and somebody hurts you, and so you're, you keep going on the timeline, but your spirit is stopped because you're still in 1987. Your spirit is 31 years older. Than, your body is 31 years older than that, but your spirit is still stuck in 1987 when somebody said you need to cut your mullet. Well, I'm not going to cut my hair. Your body keeps walking, but your spirit stays here. You're still stuck in 1987. It's time to catch up. Get it under the blood. Get forgiveness for it. Get it cleaned up. Get over, get over with it. Get, be done with it. Be done with it. I promise you, you'll feel so much better. I'm going to say these three things. Three things. I'm going to say three things and I'm going to quit. Number one. Many of you are carrying weight that you don't even know you're carrying. And when you get rid of it in your life, you'll feel like a ton has been lifted off your shoulders because you're carrying things that aren't yours to carry. You're, you're angry, you're mad, and you don't even know you're angry and mad. And, and the devil has you convinced that that's just the way it is, and that's not true. And you need to walk through it and get through it. Number two. Number two. If you do not get to the place that you can say, God, help me, and God, get through this, and God, I got to get through this, you'll always be here. You'll never move forward. And there's a promise waiting for you that God has answered 
20 years ago and he put it into place in your, in your life, but you can't get to it because you're so stuck in the trash. It doesn't matter a hill of beans. If I go back 31 years, when I was a senior in high school, if I go back 31 years, the people that made me mad and hurt me 31 years ago are all dead. So I have a choice. I can stay with the dead or I can go with the living. I can, I can choose to be church hurt for the rest of my life over something that doesn't matter anymore. I'm a grown man. I'm the age they were when they hurt my feelings. Come on, man. Come on. I can choose to do that or I can choose to walk with Christ and go get to my promise. Are you scared? Maybe God's going to ask you to do something. Are you unwilling? I'm not really willing to do that. I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to forgive them. I saw a young man today. He used to come to church here. His family used to come to church here. It just seems so sad. I told. I told them. I said they've ruined him. Ruined him because of their anger and their hate and their whatever. Their anger. Because somebody didn't do something that they thought they should have done. They didn't stink it in. They've ruined him. Turned him off toward God. Turned him off toward church. Because they choose to live with their anger. And I hope it's worth it. I hope it's worth it. They're unwilling to come to church. Listen, are you ready to go back to your own life? I'm not. Maybe. You're anticipating a challenge. See, I'm trying to look at things differently. I'm trying to look at things as not a problem, but a challenge that God's laid before me. I'm trying to look at things in a different manner that um, I, won't, I won't be so fearful or fretful over things that come against me that, that I, will, I will say, that is another challenge that God has given me to, to get through this challenge. And, and when I get through this challenge, I, I get the reward of the, I'm being rewarded with that challenge. It's never easy. It's always challenging. It's supposed to be hard. Why is it supposed to be hard? It's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't, God would just wipe everything out of the way, and you would never have a problem, you would never have anything. Every devil and every demon would never face you. They would never rise up against you. You'd never have an issue. Your health would always be great. Your weight would always be perfect. You'd never have a headache. You'd never have sickness or disease. You'd never have anything going on in your life. But sometimes in this life, it just has to be hard. Why? Because I need to learn to trust Him. When I'm going through things in my life, I, 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 just, I need to learn to trust God. I need to learn to hang on to Him. I need to learn to trust Him through the hard times as well as the good times. It's hard sometimes. I'm not going to get up here and tell you, oh, if you'll get right with God, you'll never have a problem. That's a lie from the devil. Because you'll go to work Tuesday, you lucky people. Got it off tomorrow. Matthew's been off for four days and he's on vacation. And so, and so, here man. All that to say this. If victories came without fighting, there wouldn't be any reward in winning the victory. Listen, I watched OU yesterday, and they looked good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They could have scored 100 points in the first half they wanted to. Right? Um, Colin Murray didn't make it through the second quarter. Sitting on the bench. They're playing a school that won 11 straight games last year, going back to last year. FAU, not a big university, but I thought it'd be more of a challenge. They, they took the foot off the gas in the second quarter. That's fun to play those games, but you know when they have it, when coming up in this year, they're going to have a test where it's going to be the fourth quarter with three minutes. Left, and they're going to be down by four points. 
and they're going to have to try to win the game. And I promise you the celebration if they win that game will be greater than the celebration yesterday yeah. when they had their shoulder pads and their helmets off at, at halftime walking around going, man, it's hot out here. Yeah. I watched Oklahoma State Thursday. Same. Just blew the doors off this team, Missouri State. I watched them play. I thought to myself, man, they're killing these guys. For the first quarter, you could tell this was not going to happen. Missouri State was not going to give them a challenge. Because the players are just so much different. But I promise you, when they play Texas, when they play OU, yeah. Yeah. The vet, the, who, those games and those battles, whoever wins, because those are going to be good games. Yeah. Yeah. When they play and they battle, whoever the victor is, is going to feel so much victory and reward for their hard work during the summer, their hard work during the winter, from January to August, the hard work they put in. It's going to be so rewarding to them because they won a football game. Now listen, how much greater is the quality that you have besides a football game? I'm going to cheer for you. I'm going to yell for you and scream for you. And I may even watch you on the sidelines and go, man, it's hot out Because until about October, middle of October, it's hot in the stadiums. It gets really, really hot. But what a great victory it is, and what a great reward it is when you have a victory over the enemy of God more than an enemy of your rival school. I was so glad Texas lost it. Oh, amen. <laughs> I downloaded the app so I could listen to the wine on Texas Radio. <laughs> True story. <laughs> it was so free. It was so free. Now, if they beat me in October, I'll be so mad. Okay, listen. Listen. Let's not miss our opportunities. When God says, let's do some things, and all you Texas fans, I'm just kidding. It's just a joke, okay? I did that, but you have to hear why. Okay. <laughs> Let's not miss out on the opportunities. Guys, we have such an opportunity. I, I don't plan on being up here at 80 years old. I don't. I, I don't plan on being the pastor of the church at 75 years old. I plan in the next 20 years doing what God's called me to do. And after that, we're living and passing the baton to another younger, more energetic, better ideas. Can you imagine what church is going to be like in 20 years? I can't even fathom it. It's just going to be like a hologram or something. You know, it's, just, it's, just, it's just going to be so cool, man. I'm excited about the future. I think it's really cool. I think it's exciting what they do in church now. I, I just, the church culture is, is, man, if you want to get involved in something at ground level, get involved in, in uh, the technology of church. It is unbelievable what God's doing in church and how God's moving it and what God's doing it. Yeah, it's a sacrifice of some of our older ways and some of the older things we did, but listen, it's such a cool thing. I just can't even fathom what the church is going to be like in 20, 25 years. It's so much different now than it was 10 years ago. Can't even imagine. Love you. Thank you for letting me preach to you today. Please get on that app. Please get on that and, and, and use those, those things. Uh, they're free for you to use. It won't cost you a thing. Uh, that's just something that the church, as a church, we want to give you. We want to give you access to all those things, okay? Send your feet. <laughs>